Hi, my name is Gareth P. Jones, and this is my brand new book, The Bundle. It's, it's not my brand new book. This is the toy, uh, the bundle, which is where I got the idea for the book. The book's still not arrived. I'm not sure why. It's something to do with Brexit, apparently. Um, but we're not here to talk about Brexit. We're here to talk about the Paper Beach Project. So far, we've had some fabulous authors and illustrators, and there is still more to come. Uh, and we'd like you to get involved with this art project that will be coming together on Friday, the 12th of March, when we'll be revealing Egmont's brand new name and logo. It's going to be called Chickenmont. Chicken? Egg? egg never mind uh, on top of all this if you give us the name of your school we'll give you the chance to win 500 pounds worth of books and you can't put a price on that well you can 500 pounds is probably the price so please stay tuned after the event to find out how you can get involved and also we'll be revealing the totalometer to see how we're getting on getting closer to that 3,000 entries that we're looking for as ever, you can find out more at eastcliffcreative.com forward slash paper dash beach, where you can watch all of the videos and download free eggs. Uh, no, not really. Don't hold me to the egg thing. I made that up. But there are extra materials to help you tailor the activity to the age of the child that you're working with. On the subject of eggs, if you've ever wondered what came first, the chicken or the egg, I'm not sure. But I know what comes next. It's the hen, because next it's Sophie Hen. Now, she's written and illustrated all sorts of picture books and fiction titles. But today she's going to be talking to you about her non-fiction titles. And that is true, except for the bit about the eggs. There's no free eggs. Uh, anyway, I'll see you after that. Hello everyone, my name is Sophie Hen and I am an author and an illustrator and I'm thrilled to be here as part of the Paper Beach Project. Now I'm here to talk about some books that I've made that are non-fiction. Now I do you know what that means, I'm sure you do but just in case you don't, non-fiction, well it's not like fiction is it? I do write fiction books and when I'm writing those I can just make up anything and put it in my book. Um, I can go off into all kinds of flights of fancy and imagine all kinds of wonderful things and write them all down and make a book about it. But when I'm making a non-fiction book, I can't do that because non-fiction books are books filled with facts, with true facts. So I can't go making those up. So I have to research them and I have to use um, lots of images that I find online to help me draw the things for my books. And sometimes I even work with zookeepers and experts to help me make sure that I've got my facts straight. So that's how I make non-fiction books. They are full of facts. And these are two of the such books that I have made. Oh, here we go. We've got life-size books here. Can you see those? So I am now sandwiched between a life-size T-Rex face and a life-size panda bear's face. Um, and these books are all about, well, creatures. This one's all about animals. But in them, it's got actual life-size bits of animals. So, for example... <gasps> Here we have a life-size polar bear paw. Look how big that paw is compared to my hand. Ginormous. So we have a life-size polar bear paw. And we also have, I think this might be my favourite, a life-size giant squid eye. Look, it's bigger than my head. Um, so giant squid eyes are in fact 30 centimetres round. Imagine coming face to face with that if you're going for a paddle, but don't worry, you won't, because giant squids like to live right at the bottom of the ocean. There we go. There's um, That's not a life-size picture of a squid. They're quite a lot bigger than that. They're 80 metres in, to be precise. Um, but also we've got some tiny creatures that are life-size. Look, there's a life-size pea crab. There we go. <gasps> tiny, tiny creatures as well. So it's got life-size bits of big animals and little animals in too. So I'm sure you can guess what's going on inside life-size dinosaurs. We've got some life-size dinosaur bits as well. There we go. Let's find a life-size. Oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. We've got a life-size Tyrannodon's beak. I don't even think I can fit it all in that. There we go. How does that look on me? Does it suit me? nice so there's a life-size pteranodon's beak and then we have oh our picture of our pteranodon they're diving into the ocean to catch some fish and there is a life-size t-rex mouth in here but i don't think i'll fit that onto the screen so instead i'll show you one of my favorite dinosaurs look we've got the diplodocus or diplodocus here you can say it either way apparently um but here is a life-size diplodocus face 
<gasps> there we go. That would be if I was nose to nose with a Diplodocus. That's how big it would be. So I had lots of fun making those books because not only did I research facts about the dinosaurs and search for images of them, not photos, sadly, just search for images of them. Um, but I also had to look for measurements so I could make sure that I got them the right size in the book. So maybe you could create a life size you if you found a big bit of paper or you could stick some paper together, lie down on it and draw, get someone to draw around you. And then you could make a life size you or maybe just a life size head and shoulders. Um, so that was lots of fun. Now, my latest non-fiction book that I have loved making um, is a book all about families. Now, um, have a think about your family and how your family is made up, who's in your family. And then have a think about some of your friends' families. And I'll bet that all of those families are pretty different. Well, it turns out that there's no normal type of family for animals either. Their families come in all kinds of shapes and sizes too. And that's what this book is about. All kinds of families. And I'm going to read it to you now. So get yourself nice and comfortable. And then I'm going to show you how to draw something. <gasps> oh, look, there we go. Who's that? Now, there's a little bird there. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You need to keep your eyes out and you'll find out what kind of bird that is later on. All kinds of families. All kinds of families come together in all kinds of ways. Each one is very special, but no two are quite the same. It's the same for animal families too. Here is a family, can you see that there? Here is a family where mummy looks after the babies. Orangutan mummies look after their young longer than any other animal parent. They do it all on their own and they love their babies very, very much. There we go. Oh. In this family, it's all down to daddy. Emu daddies have to work ever so hard to look after their eggs and they raise their chicks until they are two years old. Now, can you spot that bird from earlier? Yes, it was an emu chick sneaking about the book. And here is a family with a mummy and a daddy. These clownfish parents are very, very busy keeping their underwater home clean and tidy for all their eggs. Mummies can lay up to 1,000 eggs in one go. Phew. There we go. Can you see there's the clownfish with all their eggs? Oh. Other families are so enormous that everyone helps look after the babies. In elephant families, one older lady elephant is in charge and she shares her knowledge with the younger family members so everyone keeps safe and well. Some families are big and busy, so the older brothers and sisters help to look after the little ones. Long-tailed tits live in large groups of up to 20 birds who all look out for one another. In winter, everyone snuggles together to keep warm. And you could keep an eye out for those too because they live wild in this country. Sometimes grandparents look after youngsters. Orca whales live for a very long time, long enough to become grandparents. Grandmothers often look after the young while their mothers search for food. There we go. Oh. There are also families with two mummies. Sometimes female albatrosses pair up and raise chicks together. Can you see that? Oh. The two mummies stay together forever and ever. Little ones who find themselves without a family can be adopted. This family has two daddies. Every so often, two male cheetahs will adopt a lost cub and raise them as their own. <gasps> Look at them all oh, in the lovely hot sunny sun. And sometimes family can mean friends and community. Meerkats live in big groups of up to 50. Everyone has a job, either gathering food, keeping watch or babysitting. They all work together so the group is safe and fed. There we go. 
They all look very busy, don't they, meerkats? Yes, there are so many kinds of families, but they all have one thing that's the same, love. So I hope you enjoyed that story. Well, that non-fiction book about all kinds of different families. Maybe you spotted your kind of family in there or maybe not because there were too many to fit in the book. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And now I'm going to show you how to draw one of the animals in that book. And the animal I'm going to show you how to draw is a cheetah. Da, da, da. Now especially when I'm drawing non-fiction books. Sometimes I can get a little bit nervous about drawing some of the creatures I have to draw, especially the dinosaurs, actually. They were very tricky. But when I feel like that, I stop and I look at the, all the images I've got that, to help me draw these animals. And I stop and I look and I look really hard and I look for shapes within the creatures. So all the shapes that go to make up the creature. And then I just start one shape at a time and then I'll add another shape and then I'll add another shape. And after a while, I've created the whole shape. So that's my top tip and that's what we're going to do. It'll probably make more sense when I show you how I'm gonna do it. So first of all, I'm gonna use a lighter pencil to draw, um, to, to put all the shapes together. And then I'm going to use a darker pencil to go around the outside. Now, you can do the same or you could use a different colour pencil, like a lighter colour to draw the shapes. Or you could just not press as hard when we start off. But I'll, I'll let you know when to press harder. So here we go. We've got our paper. We've got our pencil. Now, we're just going to draw the cheetah's head and shoulders, just so you can see what I mean about looking for shapes. Now, I'm going to start by drawing a square and to hold don't draw hold fire just yet so you can see where i've drawn the square and how big i've drawn it and it's sort of a square like it's got curvy edges it's a bit like an old-fashioned television set i suppose so yeah that's where i've drawn my square can you see my square there so if you draw a square about that big about there on the page because we've got to fit some things in the square eventually so there we go you can draw a square like that so how's that square coming along Good. OK, now you might have guessed this is the cheetah's head. I'm going to draw the top of the cheetah's head. So I'm just going to draw a nice curve coming out of the top of the square. Now, look, my curve is a little bit wonky, but that's fine because you'll find that most animals are a little bit wonky, too. And most people, we're not symmetrical. We're not perfect shapes. So don't worry about that. So we're going to draw a nice curve coming out the top of that square now. We're going to draw another curve, slightly more of a pointy curve. It's like a curved triangle at the bottom of that square, Whoop, like that. Can you see that? There we go. So draw a curve at the bottom of that square. Now we're going to add the cheetah's ears. Now these are, cheetahs have got very round ears. So these are like little circles. They're quite like teddy bear ears, really even though cheetahs aren't like, but there we go, little circles tucked behind the top of our cheetah's head. Two little circles tucked behind the top of our cheetah's head. Look, I've even had a couple of goes there. It's fine, doesn't matter. Um, now we're going to draw the cheetah's neck. So on one side, I'm just going to draw a long line that just sort of goes all the way down to the bottom, like that. And then on the other side, I'm going to draw a line that sort of curves off to the side. Oh, like that. You can do the sound effect as well if you want to while you're drawing it. I find it helps sometimes. So now we are ready to do the outline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thicker, darker pencil and all around the outside of that shape that we've just made, I'm going to draw a thick black line. There we go. Oh, so we know what we're dealing with oh now i'm gonna draw oops all the way around the edge like that so i've actually drawn around its chin as well so we've got that thick black line all the way around the edge and then i'm going to do the same for the body and now i'm going to switch to my my thick black pen pencil so you can see that by adding 
a square, two curves and two circles. We've created the actual shape of a cheetah's head. Ta -da! Hooray, so now we're gonna add some details. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw, just above the middle, I'm gonna draw two lines, like that. Two lines, just not in the middle, just above the middle, so two lines. I'm gonna make them a little bit more even just a little bit. And then I'm going to draw two little lines that go off to the side, but they, they dip down a little bit because cheetahs look a little bit like they're wearing eyeliner, a bit like mine. There we go. Now I'm going to draw two lines starting from there, going down like that. Two lines going down like that. One, two. You got them in? Marvellous. Now I'm going to create a diagonal line that comes out of the bottom of those lines and goes down to the bottom of his chin. Oh look, there we go. So we did those two lines and now we're just going to create two. They're a little bit curved. They're not quite exactly straight diagonals, but they're a little bit curved and they go down to the bottom of his chin. Her chin, his chin, his chin. Right, now we're going to draw a triangle and we're going to draw that triangle right there. Ta -da! And then you can colour that triangle in because guess what that is? Yes, you know, that's the cheetah's nose. There we go. And now we're going to add at the bottom of that triangle, we're going to add half, well, no, two thirds of a triangle like that. So we're not going to put the bottom bit on. We're just going to do that for the cheetah's mouth. They do look quite stern cheetahs, I found. I'm sure they're not, but they do look it. Anyway, there we go. And now we're going to add the cheetah's eyes. Now, inside the, so we're going to look at this shape here. And inside it, we're going to do the same thing, but just a bit smaller. I will show you. So we're going to do... There we go. So we're going to do the same sort of shape, just a bit smaller on the inside like that. There we go. Can you do that? Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the side of my pencil, because if I use the side of the lead of my pencil, it can give me, look, can you see that? A nice soft line, not a pointy line. So if I use the top, I get a pointy line. So if I use the side of the lead and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make like a shaded triangle inside those lines. Look, I'll show you, it's easy, isn't it? There we go. So I'm just gonna use the side of my pencil and all I did was just shade it a little bit, like that. And then I'm gonna do the same shape again, inside there, but using the pointy bit of my pencil this time. Can you see, I've done it again. So we're gonna do another little, like two little corners, aren't they? Two little corners. But then I'm gonna use a curvy line to join those corners up like that. Can you see? The lights aren't helping. Curvy lines, join those corners up like that. And then I'm going to colour it in because that's going to be the cheetah's eye. I'm going to add a little bit more shading because I've nearly covered up all my shading there. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side, a curvy line to join up the two ends of that corner. And I've got two cheetah's eyes there. Marvellous. Now, we're going to add a few more details <clears throat> to the cheetah's body. So we're just going to give the suggestion of a leg there. That's just a line. And then we're going to do two lines to suggest another leg there. Ta -da! Maybe we should make them the same length though, that might help. And then we can do a sort of a zigzaggy line because the cheetahs have a nice sort of white bit of fur that comes down there. So I'm going to do that again, a bit darker so you can see it. There we go. Oh, like a little neckerchief. And now we're going to add, what is it that cheetahs have that they definitely, definitely need? We're going to add some spots. We're going to add some cheetah spots. So you can see that the spots are all over the face, but they're not really on that bit, which is called the bridge of the cheetah's nose. So we're just going to add, and again, I'm going to use the side of my pencil and I'm just going to add some spots. 
all over the cheetah's face, but not on the bridge of the cheetah's nose. Oh, look, and then I'm going to add a little bit of shading in the ears as well. So we know that the ears aren't just flat discs, that they curve inwards. Oh, there we go, a little bit of... And then we can do some spots on the rest of the cheetah's body. There we go. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave my net. Oh, and don't forget to sign your work of art. Always very important. There we go. Sign. So I hope you've enjoyed um, drawing a cheetah one shape at a time. And don't forget that when you come across complicated things that you want to draw, don't worry. Just stop. Really look at it and find those shapes. Add them all together. And then I'm sure you'll do a wonderful job. Well, now it's your turn. I've shown you how I draw the animals in my books. Well, in fact, that's how I draw pretty much everything in my books, one shape at a time. And now it's your turn to have a go. But first, you're going to have to pick your animal. And I often find this is the hardest part of my job because I'd like to draw them all. But you're going to have to pick one. Um, so have a good long think about that. Maybe it's your favourite animal. Maybe it's an animal you've hardly ever heard of. Um, maybe it's a creature that lives in the ocean. Or does it fly up high in the sky? Does it live in the snow or in a hot, hot jungle? So many decisions to make. Maybe your creature lives in the imaginary world you came up with um, when you were working with Jenny McLaughlin last week. What kind of animal would live in there? Um, is it a bug? Is it a huge animal like an elephant? So many choices, but choices you must make. So once you have chosen your animal, ask your grown up if they'll help you look on the internet for pictures of that animal. And then you can get a good idea of what they look like now. Don't forget the tips I told you. Don't worry if they look very complicated. Just look for the shapes, look for the shapes in the picture. Now I'm gonna show you what I mean. So what if I decided I wanted to draw an elephant? Oh, look, that looks quite complicated, doesn't it? There's lots of, lots of interesting shapes in there, but wait, just break it down one shape at a time. And don't forget, use your pencil lightly to, use, to build lots of shapes up, and then you can press harder when you create the outline. I'll show you. So that looks quite complicated, but hang on a minute, I have found, a rectangle. Well, it's a rectangle-ish shape there. There we go, look. Oh, rectangle. <gasps> now, the top of the elephant's head, like the top of our cheetah's head, is a dome. So I'm just going to draw a curve on the top. Now, we've got the trunk, which looks like a rectangle that's sort of been pinched in at the bottom, doesn't it? So I'm just going to draw a rectangle that's been pinched in at the bottom. There we go. A rectangle that's been pinched in at the bottom and then it's got a little curve like the head. It's got a little curve at the bottom there, like half a tennis ball. Ooh. Now we've got the bits where the elephant's eyes are. Now those, we can just draw a little line like that and another line the other side. And again, don't worry because no animal is symmetrical. So it doesn't matter if one's a bit wonky on one side and not on the other. So now we've got the elephant's head. Amazing. We've already done it. We've created the elephant's head shape. I'm going to go over it pressing harder so we can see exactly where the elephant's head is. There we go. Ta -da! Now for the ears. Now these are quite interesting shapes, aren't they? But hang on a minute. I can see a triangle at the top of that ear. Can you see that there's a triangle at the top and there's a triangle at the top of the other ear? There we go. So we've got two triangles at the top. Now we've got, I'm gonna say, it's, it's sort of squarish, squarish, rectangle-ish tucked behind the elephant's head. Look, so we just got a nice shape like that. Tuck behind the elephants. And then there's another triangle at the bottom. So there we go. Another triangle at the bottom. So now if I press hard, there's the triangle, sorry, at the bottom. If I press hard, I can do the outline of my elephant's ears. There we go. And then once I've done that, I can add a little rectangle poking out behind its face like that either side and then I can draw 
the elephant's tusks sort of like back to front at L so then it gets quite easy because you've created the big shape you've created the big complicated shape then you can just add the little shapes on oh don't forget the eyes my elephant's got red eyes that does look a little bit frightening I wouldn't give your elephant red eyes so look you can see break the animals down shape by shape and something that looks quite complicated actually starts to become quite simple so once you've done that with your chosen animal and you've drawn your picture and also I mean have a few goes I very rarely get it right first time um well I never get it right first time and once you've drawn your animal and you're happy with it um, maybe find out some fantastic facts about that animal maybe even draw a life-size bit of that animal you could um draw maybe it's a life-size paw so you could find out the measurements of that and then and then measure it out on the page and draw a life-size paw um or maybe it's a life-size foot who knows? Um, so find out some fantastic facts, maybe add a little life size element to your drawing. And you know what? I think then you've created the first page of your non-fiction book. And just like my drawings that I do one shape at a time, I only ever make my books one page at a time as well. So keep going. And I hope you have lots and lots of fun doing it. So pause the video now and have a chat with your grown up about how much time you're going to spend doing this. Um, but do come back because I'd love to know how you've got on. Have fun. Hello. So how did you get on? I bet you've drawn some amazing animals and come up with some fantastic facts. I really hope you've enjoyed it. But get ready for more because Gareth is just about to tell you how you can create an entry for our Paper Beach project. But before he does, I wanted to share my entry to the project with you. Now, I found it really hard because this is all about where reading takes you. It's no secret I love books, but I love all kinds of books. So I was really struggling to find just one place that reading took me. So instead what I did, and I don't think it's cheating, I thought about all the wonderful ways that reading can transport me to all of these wonderful magical places. So maybe I'm flying on the back of a giant flying dragon, or maybe I'm floating through the air in a beautiful hot air balloon. I could be on a beautiful old steam liner swooshing across the ocean or clickety clacking on a fairy tale carriage. Or maybe I'm on a steam train to a certain wizard school or maybe I'm in a rocket to the moon. So that's how I created my entry. And I really hope it gives you an idea of all the wonderful places that reading transports me to. And I can't wait to see all the wonderful entries that you guys come up with. Good luck. And now it's back to Gareth. Hello again. Funnily enough, I had a boss who was an octagon made out of hexagons. No, not really. She was a dragon. <laughs> and now it's time for the Paper Beach Project. We're looking for 3,000 entries. And although we're heading in the right direction, we need more. We've got three weeks left to go. And we definitely need your help in reaching that target. So please do send in your entries. But also, if you could spread the word, put it on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on Flag Time, on Cheesy Feeds, on Boggle Time. I'm not sure all of these are real websites but you get the idea um please help us to get uh, more people involved and remember everyone who submits an entry gets the chance to win 500 pounds worth of books for their school and so here's this week's look at the totalometer last week's winner is now being shown on the screen congratulations to you and your school to create your submission, you'll need a piece of A4 paper and your imagination. Then simply add two teaspoons of your imagination to the paper, applying it with a black pen. It has to be a black pen. Don't ask me why, just accept it. Although you can uh, type your message on your computer if you prefer. The subject is adventures and we'd like to know where you'd like to go on your next reading adventure. It could be Jupiter, it could be a land of talking toilets or it could be, I don't know, Swindon. Uh, once you've done, scan your piece of paper in and email your typed entry to eastcliffcreatives at gmail.com. Don't forget to tell us the town or city where you live and the name of your school to be in with a chance for winning that competition prize. If you don't have a scanner, you could take a good clear picture and email that or pop your entry in an envelope and send it to this address. 
please check out the website eastcliffcreatives.com forward slash paper dash beach where you can find the terms and conditions and where you can type your message for the project directly into a form. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Please do continue to spread the word and send in your submissions and see you next week. Bye. Bye.